Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to Chapel of Faith and Breakout Church. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for the opportunity of giving us to be children. Because we are children, we are attracted towards you. Those who are not children can be attracted towards you. Help us to live our life so that at the last day, we will not be amongst those who will say, not all who say, Lord, Lord, who enter the kingdom, but those who do the will of the Father. Help us to live our life in a way, oh God, individually, that we shall find ourselves doing your will, living in righteousness and holiness, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our first lesson came from Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49 speaks about the, the call of Jacob. Jacob. Jacob called all his children because it was time for him to go home. Amen? Amen. Our fathers, our fathers can have insight into when they are about to die. What happened to Sir A.K. is here? He knew it was not time. If it were time, God would tell him. I'll give you an example. In 1985, when my, when my dad died, he was diabetic for 63 years. From 1963, no, not 63 years, I don't know how many years, but from 1963 to 1985. The last hospital he went, he was at UNTH, and then I was in my second year. Yeah, second year. I knew he was rushed to the hospital, but because we were preparing for exams, I never had time to go and visit him. All of a sudden, one day, I was taking my lunch in the crack cafeteria. Oh, okay, sorry, I lost my appetite. I said I have to go and see my dad. I left that food there. Took a taxi to UNT. And uh, while I came, he was sitting, there were some visitors. Not long after I came, my elder brother arrived. Not long after that, my elder sister came. And my other sister came. The only person that didn't come was my immediate younger brother because he was at Nsoka, UNM Nsoka. Not long after that, these visitors left. And my dad said, he calls my name in full. He said, Chukuka. He doesn't call me Chuka. He said, Chukuka. We are just the pillow for me. I readjusted the pillow for him. And he left he fell back to the bed. Guess what happened next? <laughs> and my younger, my elder brother, Louis, said, Papa, cheer up, cheer up. You know what he said? Louis, don't you know I'm dying? And that was the last we had from him. The one of Jacob is very thrilling to me. When I was reading it, I wondered why God took me to this place. Jacob summoned all his children. My dad did not summon all of us. But by God's intervention, all of us were summoned spiritually. The first daughter, the second daughter, the first son, the second son, four of us were there. And so he died in our presence. But in, in here, I noticed that Jacob summoned all his children and began to speak to them individually. You know, when I was reading what Jacob told each of his sons, I observed something. I saw Jacob as a prophet right away. Because Jacob was not speaking about what will happen in the immediate. 
all the children of Jacob died in Egypt. But Jacob was speaking of what will happen in future. And what I found out from what Jacob was saying is that the way I live today can affect my children. Are you getting me? The life I live today can affect my children, generations to come. Let me give you an example. The first one here, he said, he spoke about Reuben. Reuben happened to be Jacob's first son. Reuben, you are my first born. My might and the beginning of my strength. The excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water. And then he said, you shall not excel. He's not speaking to that Reuben he's seeing here. He's speaking to the generation of Reuben that will come. Let's see why he said, you shall not excel. Because you went up to, to your father's bed, then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. Reuben sinned to the extent of going to the father's bed. And when Jacob was saying, you will not excel, that will affect the great, great grandchildren of Reuben. So what does this tell you and I? Be careful the life you live. Because you can trigger an unrighteousness that can affect your generation. And that is why today some people are going for deliverance. Because they found themselves a pattern in their life repeating over and over. They don't know why. But it's because of something that happened through their parents. So that's why I said, Jacob is a prophet. And then he said to Simeon and Levi, our brothers, instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Let not my soul enter their council. Let not my honor be united in their assembly. For in their anger, they slew a man. And in their self-will, they hamstrung an ox. Cause speak their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. He's not speaking of what will happen in Egypt. He's speaking of what will happen in this time to come. Hallelujah. Amen. They all died in Egypt with their immediate children, but everything he spoke here happened. And he, did, he was not speaking because he wanted to speak. He was speaking because he was speaking as a prophet. What he is receiving from God about them. And then I love this. This one is prophetic. What he said to his son Judah. Listen. Judah, you are he whom your brother shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down and lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse? You, verse 10 is where the prophecy came. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the Lord giver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. When I read this, I said, God, Holy Spirit, what does this mean? It's simple. We know that Moses came from Judah, he brought the Lord. We know that law was what held the nation of Israel until what happened? Until Jesus came. Until Shiloh comes. 
Jesus came and brought grace. That does not mean that law is cancelled. But rather, it means that whatever law finds you guilty of, grace can cover it through the blood of Jesus if you repent. Hallelujah. Amen. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor lawgiver between his feet until Shiloh comes, binding his donkey to the vine and his donkey called to the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grace. Praise the Lord. Fathers hold enormous responsibility in the family. Be careful how you come around your father. We see a father here which Jesus gave us a parable of the lost son in Luke chapter 15, 11 to 13 and 17 to 24. All of a sudden the son said, Lord, father, I am grown. I am 18 or 19. I want to get out. I want to go on my own. I need my inheritance. Children, be careful how you live where you're supposed to be until such a time. Because God does not compel us to stay under him. God does not compel you to stay under him, to be a child. He was ready to let him go. Salvation is by choice. It's not by compulsion. If you choose to be saved, you remain saved. If you choose the world, the world is there, ready to open their hands wide to welcome you. And so what happened? This child took his inheritance and ran into the world and squandered his inheritance. But thank God, he came to his senses. He came to his senses. When he came to his senses, the first thought that came to him was, I am feeding from the pigs, but my father's servants are well off. So what did he do? He went back to his father. And when he arrived before his father, the first thing he said, he saw himself as a sinner. And told the father, I'm not worthy of anything from you. Just, I want to be a servant. When we come to God, let's remember, we are servants. Not only servants, but unprofitable servants. Hallelujah. I use the word unprofitable because I'm not supposed to brag of anything or any revelation God has given me or has given you. Or he plays good in piano. He plays drum very well. We are all unprofitable servants. And so what was the reaction of the father? The reaction of the father is an example of what God is always willing to do when we come back home. Anytime we come back home, he's ready to accept us. Not only did he accept him, he asked him to remove the clothes he had and gave him his own clothes. When we come to God, it's not what we want that prevails. It's what God wants. God wants us to be cleansed. Recording that child represents worship and bringing him to the test of his father. Who you are or what you have before you came back to Jesus must stop at the door. You must come humbly, ready to accept the new clothes in Christ. Jesus is ready to clothe you if you are willing and see yourself as a servant. And so what happened? This young man was clothed and his life changed. 
Now, I want to balance this. This son had that opportunity because he came to his senses and repented while he is still living. This opportunity does not last forever. It comes a time when it expires. Many people have desired to come back. Somebody was telling me the other day that in hell, all the people you see in hell are believers. Why? All the people in hell are believers. Why? Because they have understood the reality and they have believed. They have believed that Jesus is the Lord. They have believed that Jesus is the King of Kings. They have believed that hell really exists and Satan rules in hell. The other day, something happened in Saudi Arabia. The crown prince, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, all of a sudden said he's stepping out from Muslim religion. What did he do? He took time and arrested all the scholars and put them in jail and said he cannot continue with this. I don't know your relationship with Jesus, what you call him to be. I don't know your effort so far to make sure you have a personal relationship with him. There was a story of ten virgins. They were all virgins, like we have virgins in the eye of God. But they were foolish ones, and they were wise ones. If you find yourself in church, and you are a Christian, make sure you don't fall amongst the foolish ones. What is the difference between the two? One was prepared, the other we are not prepared. But they were all virgins. Are you prepared? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Don't think everything will continue to go the way it is. There will be transition. There will be change. Let me give you a prophecy. We are going into... I, keep, I gave this prophecy last time and I'm going to repeat it again. If you think things will continue this way, you are kidding. Nations fall in history nations fall. Babylon fell, represent, represented the gold in the statue which Nebuchadnezzar saw. Persia fell, representing silver. We are no longer in silver. Bronze, which was Alexander the Great. Greeks, they fell. They were a time they were ruling. They were world power. Alexander the Great was conquering everywhere, every nooks and corner. Their generation left. He went into the Iron Dispensation, and that was the Roman government. The other day I was in Rome when I visited my sister. I said, was it the town where that ruled the whole world and made a mess of the whole world? At a point they fell. We are no longer in that dispensation. After the iron, you find a mixture of iron and clay, which had two legs. And that is democracy. I will call that British government, British Empire, American Empire, and uh, Russia. And the Bible said that while this uh, Nebuchadnezzar was watching at this statue, a hand from nowhere struck that statue, and it fell and crumbled. And the pieces of that crumble rose and became a mountain and filled the whole world. If you look at the schedule of God, you know we're not in gold, you know we're not in silver, you know that we are not in bronze, you know we are not in uh, iron, which is British Empire, you know that we are not in combination of iron and uh, and the clay, which is democracy and the other types of government. Brethren, I want to tell you the truth. We are in the end of times. 
Anything can happen anytime. I don't know what that crumble means. Um, in my spirit, suggesting to me that very soon there will be a nuclear exchange in this world that will mess up the entire government system of this world and will come to zero where Christ will reign. The other day, for the first time, Chinese bomber and the, American, and the Russian bomber were heading towards Alaska. Why? Why would China and uh, Russia fly together towards America? Think about this. In whatever you are doing, be conscious of your environment. Read other things and draw closer to Christ. So that if anything happens, maybe you die. If you die, you make sure you know where you are going to. May the Lord use this message to bless our souls, to get us prepared, to remind us that we are like flower. We bloom during the day. In the evening, we are slow.